again, we have knowledge that the people of the world do not have. We have a revelation that the people of the world do not have. For us, it's a revelation. And for them, it's a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. Then it says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. You understand that? In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. When you blink your eyes, and then in the original word actually for this in the Greek is even a shorter time. It's something you cannot even measure just like that. And it has taken place in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible. And then it says, we of that generation, of that time, when Christ will come, we shall be change. I pray you'll take part in that in Jesus' name. I'm dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the final change. At the rapture of true Christians. The final change at the rapture of true Christians. Not of the church goers, not of the nominal Christians, not of the backsliding Christians, not of the sinning Christians, if there's anything like that, not of denominational Christians. The, it says it's the final change that will come at the rapture of true Christians. Number two, the future change through resurrection by Christ. The future change through resurrection by christ number three the faithful charge to the righteous in christ the faithful charge to the righteous in christ number one what's number one i just to know what kind of class i have that's why i normally ask you i know you are writing down what's number two And then what's number three? The faithful charge to the righteous in Christ. Number one is the final change at the rapture of the church. We're looking at First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. And we're reading there from verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Reading from verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, Concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And then it says in verse 15, For this will say unto you, by the watch of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, shall not hinder, shall not proceed, shall not come before them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first at a time when christ comes back to take the church away it says the dead in christ shall rise and then it says now in verse 17 then we which are alive that is we're, we're believers we're children of god were saved we have been justified we have been cleansed by the blood of the lord jesus christ were purified and purged by the blood of Christ, were made righteous because of the work of atonement that Christ has done. He says, all such people who are partaking of the goodness of God, the grace of God, and the godliness that comes as a result of that sacrifice of Christ, then we, believers, we, the righteous, we that are expecting the coming of the Lord, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 
That is a revelation concerning the rapture. And as I told you before, that's not something strange. It's happened before. Look at Genesis chapter, chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 22. Genesis chapter 5. Verse 22. And Enoch walked with God. After he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not. Enoch walked with God. And he was not. They just found they couldn't see him again. For God took him. For God took him. He didn't die. That was his rapture. How did that happen? What kind of life did he live for to make that happen? And what was the very source of that life to make that happen? What was the power behind such life? The source of his strength. That he lived in such a polluted situation, a polluted environment, and yet he was like the white lily coming out and growing out of the dirty environment. It's because of the faith that he had. In fact, we're told in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated. By faith, Enoch was translated. He didn't count it as a mystery, as something impossible. He knew that with God all things are possible. If he wants to take him out of this earth and take him to heaven without ever seeing death, he knew it was a possibility with God. And when you understand that with God all things are possible, and the Lord is revealing to you the mystery of the rapture, and that he says the dead in Christ shall rise, you'll not be imagining how will that happen? How did it happen with Enoch? How did it happen with Elijah? And in that we which are alive, the children of God at the moment when the trumpet shall sound that we shall be changed and then taken to heaven without seeing death you'll not be counting it as a mystery anymore to them who are in the world it's a mystery but for us now it is revelation by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him but listen to this now for before his translation, before his translation, before that rapture, before God took him away, he had this testimony that he did what? Tell me out loud. It pleased God. It didn't please self. It didn't please the society. It didn't please the people around. He pleased God. Every moment, that's why it says he walked with God. You just imagine for one year, 10 years, 30 years, 100 years, 200 years, and 300 years, the man just kept walking with God. And he pleased God because of the faith he had in God. And that's why after this conference, you know the rapture can take place anytime. And the commitment of your life is just to please the Lord. Just to please the Lord. You look at First Thessalonians. Thessalonians chapter, chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. We're looking at verse 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak not as pleasing men. Not as pleasing men. You want to take part in this revealed rapture that god is saying it's you have received the message from our pastor pastor wf kumoye the general superintendent of the parallel bible church it is my wish that as you listen you accept the whole world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts and by the grace of the lord you will never regret it it is my prayer that by next week when our, our pastor shall come up again to present another message you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week, and the one we are going to listen to the next week. 
by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. If you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.